So you're going through the leak detection process and you're pretty sure you have a leak somewhere in the structure of your vinyl liner swimming pool. And by structure, what I mean is not the plumbing lines itself, but somewhere in the basin essentially of the pool. And this video is specific to vinyl liner swimming pools. Now, if you have determined you're losing water somewhere in the structure of a vinyl liner pool, nine times out of 10, you have a hole in your liner. Um, that is the downside of a vinyl liner is they're relatively easy to poke a hole in uh, or a couple holes and I mean it that's that's pretty much it right there you'll start losing water and uh, the the amount of water that you lose um, you can lose more or less depending on the amount of groundwater surrounding the pool uh, so it can lead to somewhat sometimes some elusive uh, results in terms of just trying to troubleshoot the problem and figure out exactly where this water is going well how come sometimes some days i lose this much or some days i lose that much it's well this could be one of those reasons is that you have holes in your liner and that uh some days the ground's really dry and it just soaks that water right up some days the uh, you know it, it's like your swimming pool is sitting in a bathtub full of water there's there's no more place for water to go so you don't really lose any um but if i had a if i had a vinyl liner swimming pool and i had a su suspected structure leak uh, that's what I'm looking for right away, nine times out of ten, is holes in the liner. So I guess that's n probably not a surprise to you, so let me give you a little bit of information that might actually help you. So the first thing is, is that what does a hole in a vinyl liner look like? I mean, aside from like a foot-sized hole uh, in the side of your wall, what you're looking for is tiny little crescent shape uh, indents in the vinyl liner. And these crescent shaped indents could be as small as, let's say, a quarter inch long. So really, really small and just a tiny little uh, half circle. And that's what would uh, what typically it would look like if you had, say, um, you know, something sharp on the end of uh, your maintenance equipment, like one of your brushes or your vacuums. Uh, in fact, along those lines, brushes, vacuums, things like that, anything that, that is getting put into the swimming pool at some point, uh, you need to inspect it and make sure that there's nothing sharp on there. A lot of times, you know, you just, you're not even thinking, like a little tab will break off on, on your brush and you're like, oh, it's put a piece of wire and put that on there, ta-da, it stays on. Yeah, but then there's this sharp piece of wire and as you're brushing the pool, the brush flips over and, and you just could be ripping the liner to pieces with something like that. So that's one of the first things that I check on uh, vinyl liner pools. I'll just go and check out the maintenance equipment, make sure everything looks pretty good and there's nothing uh, malicious looking that might be responsible for uh, causing some holes in the liner. Supposing uh, I was inspecting the liner itself for holes, I mean, it's a meticulous process. Uh, get in the water, swim around slowly, and look for holes. Um, the place that I would look most commonly would be at foot level, uh, so around the floor of the shallow end, uh, specifically the corner where people tend to hang out and it just takes more of a beating there than normal. Um, those are the areas that I would be inspecting most, so about you know th anywhere between three and four feet down from the water line. Um, anywhere along the floor of the shallow end, uh, again, especially paying attention to the cove uh, where the floor meets the wall or the corners, those are the areas that are going to be most likely to have uh, had a puncture for one reason or another. And um, if you find something like that, sure, absolutely get some regular old uh, vinyl liner patch and m most of them you can use underwater and you just glue it in there and you're good to go. If you find all the holes and you get them patched up properly, like you're, you're, that's it, you're finished. You can f fill the pool back up and it'll, it'll actually stop leaking. Um, but if you have one, maybe you have two, maybe you have 163. It's hard to tell, you know, it's, you, you kind of have to look towards like, where did this hole come from? What caused this problem? Um, that being said, if you've done uh, a thorough look and you've, you've looked around as best as a person could possibly look and you can't find any holes on the, the, the cove or the floor, uh, check the wall basically near to the water line. Uh, you know, maybe this far down from the top of the pool, check the wall, the entire perimeter around the pool and see if, uh, see if you can find any holes that way. Uh, cause that's again, a common location for something like that to occur. Um, the only other place that I might say could be prone is if you have uh, an automatic vacuum driving itself around. Does it get hung up in one location all the time? 
um, maybe inspect that location thoroughly. Maybe it's uh, got hung up one day and just continued to pulsate or do its thing and managed to actually wear a hole right through the vinyl liner. That could happen. Or the ones with track systems on them uh, could get hung up on a ledge where they can't proceed, but those tracks are just going, and over the course of the day, it wore it down, and there could be a hole in the vinyl liner there. Um, those would be the most likely places that I'd be looking for a structure leak in a vinyl liner pool. Um, let's see, The other than that, uh, I guess the next uh, biggest thing, well the next biggest thing is the steps, really. Um, any any vinyl liner pool that has a set of in-wall stairs um, with a, a compression seal gas gasket system is always going to be um, a potential location for a leak. Basically what it is is the steps are you know like four feet, six feet or eight feet wide and then uh, a couple feet tall and in, in installing that you're installing 60, 80 screws sometimes and if any of them, any single one of them are not to compression tightness uh, you're, you're going to be losing water in that location. If any of them are stripped, which happens all the time, because you, oftentimes you're going into a plastic flange receiver too, so it's so easy to strip it out. Uh, basically the best you can do is just oversize it or use a more aggressive thread screw and hopefully you can get a bite and if you can't do uh, get a seal that way you have to drill holes on either side of the original hole, you have to fill the, the original hole and then you have to tap new stainless steel screws in. It's, uh, there's a lot of ways that uh, uh, stairs, you can end up with leaks around stairs, either from the, the day it was installed or something that can develop over time. Uh, like you often hear if you have a vinyl liner pool, you can't drain the vinyl liner pool, you might ruin it. One of the biggest areas of concern is around the steps because at the bottom of the steps there's usually only you know anywhere from a couple inches to about a foot of, of vinyl liner on the, the wall before it goes to the horizontal plane on the floor surface or the floor area. So that tiny amount of, uh, of vinyl on the vertical surface is just not much there to stretch. So if the wall uh, or if the, the pool drains and the water get, or the water in the deep end tries to drag the liner from the shallow end into the deep end, which is what will happen, that area specifically right underneath the, the steps, that's going to be the first area that you're going to end up with a problem. Um, there's just there's so little vinyl there to stretch so um, the very bottom corners on both sides of the step flange that's the first place I'm looking if I suspect uh, a leak with a with this uh, set of stairs or I'll pull the beauty caps off and I'll inspect and see is there anything that looks funny here oftentimes those stair flanges get reused so you can see what previous installers did whether somebody's just did they look nice and clean like as though they've only been installed once or did they look like Swiss cheese where somebody's just had a heroic battle drilling holes and putting silicone and epoxy and various screws of different sizes just trying to get the stupid things to stop leaking. I see that all the time, uh, from usually from inexperienced installers who don't really know what they're doing. Um, and definitely if you pop your beauty flanges off on the steps and you can see that they they look bad, I'm concerned and I'd be die testing around them pretty thoroughly and to see if I can find a leak that way. Um, maybe even go so far as try to try test each screw. Uh, test each one's going to be a, a Phillips or a Robertson. Just give them a, 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 a Titan and see. Now, I mean, I should, I have to say there, if you do that, you accept the responsibility of if you over tighten it and you start spinning those screws, you've got a problem. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's true whether you're just installing the liner or whether it's already installed and you're just checking them. Um, if you over tighten those screws into a plastic receiver, uh, it'll just strip the plastic receiver and then you've opened a can of worms you have to solve that if it's if it's spinning it's leaking guaranteed um, so if I were to inspect them all and they all looked good and maybe I even went so far as to test each one of them which I would do and they all felt good I had no reason to believe that the skimmer or the the stair flange was leaking um, probably the next place that I would look would be all of the return flanges and skimmer flanges, any place where you've had to uh, have a compression seal. Over time, some, uh, especially if you have bad chemistry, you, the gaskets on your return flanges and your skimmer flanges can deteriorate. And what used to be a compression tight screw now is just like, you can just grab it and tighten it more. Um, you should, they should be all quite quite snug to get a compression seal. So you can check the, uh, the all of the screws on your uh, return uh, flanges and your skimmer flange with the same uh, the same warning that in doing so you can cause a problem. So I mean you should probably be familiar with what you're doing before you just go out there and start stabbing screwdrivers into your uh, into your, your flanges trying to fix them. 
they need to be compression tight, but if they start spinning, you have to be ready to do something about it because you can't leave it like that. It's, it's going to be a big problem. And if you go out there and you notice like uh, really commonly one, uh, when somebody installed the, the skimmer flange, one of them was spinning, nobody noticed, so he just left it. I mean, that happens all the time. And so you might go out there because you're the guy experiencing the water loss and you start m monkeying around and you notice one of those screws just spins. Is it possible that that's not a problem? No, it's not possible. That's definitely a problem and something that shouldn't be and something that needs to be addressed. And that's probably the location that you're losing your water. If you're watching this uh, and that's the case on either your return or your skimmer, you can spin uh, screws or even on your stair flange for that matter, you've got a problem. That's probably where you're losing water. Uh, other than inspecting flanges, actually one more thing I'll say about flanges is return flanges you see all the time. They get over tightened or somebody's used the wrong gasket orientation and as a result where the screw itself, there's usually four screws, where the screw is it's very tight and it creates these stress fractures there because the plastic's at its thinnest and the screw is at its tightest. Um, and those stress fractures over time can actually just give way and, and break away. And, and you see that all the time with older vinyl liner swimming pools is stress fractures at those locations and even just flat out missing pieces and all the way to the point where sometimes just half the interior flange is just missing altogether. Like, oh, is that a problem? Yeah, that's a problem. You're losing a ton of water through that. As it turns out, you need them. That's why they were there to begin with. Um, so if you check your flanges and they're just destroyed, I mean, that's, they need to be addressed because you're losing water through them. Well, can you just take it off and put a new one on? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe when you take the old flange off, the whole liner moves uh, because it's old and it's under stress because it's been shrinking every year and it just... It, as soon as you take the screws out, the liner moves. Now you can't get it back to where it was. Now what are you going to do? Seam in a gigantic patch and cut out a new one? Like, I mean, that's a thing that can happen. More likely, now you're looking at a new liner. So that's why you don't really do anything about them. But having broken return flanges can be one of the triggers that causes you to need a new liner. Maybe your liner's like older, but you're still hoping to get a little life out of it. If those return flanges are, are smashed and they're leaking, you might need to do a, a new liner just for that reason. You could maybe try to do the return, just change the flange itself and hope for the best, but you have to be ready for the worst in that if it, if it all goes bad on you, you can't fix it, you have to be ready to, to uh, just to enter right into a liner renovation project at that point. So I think we've checked out everything except for one of the biggest things in vinyl liner swimming pools, uh, which, is, which is lights. Uh, lights are a major source of leaks in vinyl liner swimming pools. There's a lot of different reasons why. Um, it's how they get mounted. Um, normally with lights, you're cutting your own holes in the walls, whereas these, and that used to be commonplace. Everybody used to cut their own holes in the walls for the skimmer and the returns and stuff. Nowadays, you don't do that. All that, all that comes pre-punched out from the manufacturer, but usually not lights. So a lot of guys are out there cutting out lights, but they don't normally, they don't cut out stuff as a part of their day-to-day -day activities building swimming pools anymore. So maybe that that cutout isn't as clean as it could have been, or the edges didn't get rasped properly, um, or the, you know, he was using an inferior level jigsaw, and he just couldn't, you know, turn the corners of the radius properly, and it just, ultimately, the light doesn't fit. That can be the source of a leak. Um, it, it's another uh, compression gasket with screws on it. If one of those screws doesn't tighten uh, or it's just spinning and it's stripped, that's the source of a leak. But the big source of leak with lights is definitely the electrical connection. So the electrical connection comes out the top uh, and then it transfers to an electrical conduit and uh, it either runs to a deck box located there or it runs back to a different location like the pump room where uh, you'll see an electrical conduit coming out of the ground. And then usually it'll run to a light transform or something like that. Um, so what happens is, is where the electrical conduit connects to the back of the niche is a weak point in the connection. And that's something that can definitely uh, develop a leak over time from freeze and thaw conditions or the ground shifting. That pipe can shear off and now the water is able to exit out through the back of the light niche. Um, if I had that problem, probably the best thing that I would do is use some uh, silicone or better yet, like an, uh, an electrical putty. It's something that doesn't harden. It's just like a durable putty. And I would pack the, the back side of the light niche where the wire exits the, uh, the light niche and see if I can't slow down the rate of water loss that way. If I suspect that I'm losing water at the back side of a light niche, which again is pretty darn common in vinyl liner swimming pools, if not all swimming pools for that matter. 
Um, so if I were introduced to a vinyl liner swimming pool that had these problems described and I was suspecting a structure leak, that's the process that I would follow in trying to solve it. And those are the areas of concern that I would inspect most closely when trying to determine exactly where this water is going.